technology is not um, it's also it has its own drawback too. So that is drawback we have just experienced. The thing went off. So I won't mind. Uh, if you cannot, you should be able to hear me. You should be able to hear me. Is there anybody who's not hearing me? Uh, should be able to hear me. Um, oh, I did say she's not hearing me. Oh, are they, will you refresh, refresh? If you are not hearing me, can you refresh? Okay, I'm hearing you. Okay, Ebanji is hearing me. Alabi Busaya was able to join us. That's fine. Yes, when you join like that, you encourage me. Uh, there's no doubt. So I'll continue the lecture. I think I will start again so that I can take it from the beginning. You can have your one video that uh, we serve for everybody. Please write your name and matric number. That is our attendance. Everything is registered by this platform. Both our faces, what you wrote in the chat box, even your voices when you speak. That's why I want people to speak. You hear your voices again when we share the video. So it's very important that we do that. So we go to the lecture right away and then um, uh, continue where we stopped. Like I said, every um, every system of human being is, has its own drawbacks. So what we are seeing today is one of the drawbacks of technology that suddenly the whole thing disappeared because my machine was down for no electricity. Uh, somebody using Techno Avoid uh, 3A, you please change the name to her name so that we can know. But remember to write your matric number. Very important, write your matric number and your name in the chat box. Okay, so we share our screen now and we move uh, to the lecture room. So, um, remember I said we are dealing with dental ceramics, so we're going to be talking starting all over again, so that uh, those who are not here, and uh, because the video has cut off, then uh, we will be able to catch up. You know that this is your DT414, Science of Data Materials 3. Uh, we've done a lot of lectures about this in the past. Uh, this data ceramic should be concluding our lecture on uh, DT414 science of data material three uh, in your, at your level. Uh, like I said, we're talking about data ceramics. I say it's a very wide subject, very wide. But today we will be dealing with data ceramic one, tomorrow data ceramic two, and uh, we will have covered the most important aspect of uh, uh, ceramic that you need to know at this level. And uh, I don't expect anybody to be novice, happy to be a novice uh, after this lecture. Now, the learning objectives usually are things you should be looking forward to uh, at the end of the lecture. The history of data uh, ceramics, no distinction between data uh, ceramics and other related materials, no the uses and clarification and application of data ceramics for restorative procedures. Um, able to know different classification and system. I said data material and data ceramic of different system. So many that you cannot even cover all in one or two lectures. Then you understand the constituent, what make up data ceramic, and the basic method of manufacture. We should be able to cover that within uh, the space of time that we are going to be here together. And then let's begin with history. How Tensor ceramic start. Uh, I said it's, it's a child of necessity. Before, what you use is gold and other alloys to make crowns. And you know, you cannot place crown in, uh, in arterial. Everybody will know that there's something wrong. So, uh, science, scientists begin to look for alternatives. What we have, uh, what will produce aesthetics, that will to produce teeth that will look like the natural one that you do need to. Uh, border when the denture or the ceramic or the crown is a mouth, nobody will notice that that person is wearing anything. 
shall go down other alloys failed this test. And that is why work on ceramic continues. And it was first introduced to dentistry by Charles Lang. Charles Lang, that is around 1900, so many centuries back. And uh, I tell you, so many decades rather back. Um, as a matter of fact, you see that uh, that's data ceramics that was introduced by Charles Lang uh, was also improved upon. But as a matter of about EB exploding, and that was publicized by W.A. Capon. But it is still found out that the ceramic is still poor in strength. Because after manufacturing, it develops micro cracking and eventually it will give way and it split. So it isn't so good for purpose. And scientists continue to grow uh, uh, their, their, their scientific investigation and uh, to look at a better ceramic system that can serve purpose. And uh, because it means the aesthetic need of the patient, so it's good, and people begin to continue to work. Initially, uh, porcelain jacket crown are made, but it has difficulty of uh, fabrication. And so the search continues. Um, because of the initial type of uh, ceramics that are made that I've been talking about, they are poor in heat and they don't bond with uh, metal so well. And that is why the dissatisfaction with the ceramic that was introduced by Shasland continued to um, continue to stimulate interest for better uh, investigation uh, for investigation to for, for discovery of better uh, porcelain that we that will meet all the purposes of uh, dental restoration. And so, in 1950s and 1960s, uh, within this period of time, M. Clean uh, discovered another type of uh, ceramic system, and that ceramic system bond very well with metal. And that was, it was at that time that metal ceramic uh, system was discovered. And uh, this is very good. It has wear resistance. It has good strength. That is when oscillate tubes to metal crown uh, become uh, popular. So you see over, over a period of history, uh, the need for aesthetics continued to uh, put demand for investigation to see how ceramic system that can serve purpose can be developed. So it continues like that. And um, to date, the metal ceramic system continues to be a uh, material of choice for many. In all the practice that we have had, it's what to date that people are using. Uh, because it solved the problem of uh, the marginal problem where it cracks, it solved the problem of micro cracking. And so, as a matter of fact, it is uh, sweet for, suitable for uh, that purpose. But then, the search continued to go on. Like I told you, we cannot finish ceramic in one lecture. The search continues to go on to see how improvement could be uh, made. And then, um, uh, some problems of uh, opacity, translucency, transparency, which also still give rise to poor aesthetics, continue to be a problem with a metal ceramic system, and research continues. And in 1965, M. Klein and Hodges had a breakthrough in their work with the introduction of alumina. Alumina reinforced the core materials for ceramic, and this also improved strength and improved aesthetics, translucency, opacity, and all those problems that are associated with the previously developed uh, ceramic uh, were being addressed by the introduction of our, of our uh, alumina. Uh, into, into ceramic uh, composition. And this development was still deficient as ceramic was yet to be suitable for crystal surfaces because it's still wear down. If you use it to make uh, uh, posterior teeth and patient sweet uh, shoe with it, over some times it wears down. So you see the journey of ceramic is so uh, tedious and it goes through from exercise to poor strength. Uh, now, crystal, so they have solved the problem to from extent, the problem of opacity, translucency, transparency was still a rearing its ugly head. And the introduction in 1965 for Admir solved the problem. But it's still uh, a problem that is still wearing down when patient wears it. So um, research continues, just like 
a normal thing in science. But in 1990, uh, there was reemergence of all ceramic crown. All ceramic crown. This is without metal. And that system, Nobel Baukia in mid 1990s introduced the Procera. That is a system developed by Baukia. All ceram core ceramics, which, has, uh, which was the first car cam structure which consists of 99.9 .9 alumina to which a perspatic ceramic was laid. You see, the introduction of alumina uh, reinforced the call of uh, McLean, I mean, the, the ceramic, which was introduced by M. Klein, and it made this better than the previously developed. But now, the alumina composition was introduced, I mean, maybe increased by 99.9% making most of the uh, material that made it up. And that was added to perspective uh, ceramic. And that made it to be better. And then um, uh, that gave rise to all ceramic uh, system. So you see that over a period of time, the, the, the development of uh, porcelain uh, was, uh, was, was very uh, difficult. And it uh, poses a lot of challenges each time and every time. And that's one thing about science. You cannot uh, say you are satisfied, you are managing something. Somebody somewhere is trying to see the, the problem and address it and produce something better. That makes science very unique. And um, a sample of modern ceramic, uh, we have so many of them, but I just gave you a few examples. We have castable glass ceramics. They cast it like with centrifugal casting machine. I don't know if you have seen such a ceramic before. That's one ceramic system. We have shrink free coarse ceramics. We have ejection molded coarse ceramics. We have glass infiltrated aluminum coarse ceramics. We have CADCM, that is CATCAM uh, system. So many ceramics um, emerge after the uh, 1990. Uh, introduction of um, all serum by Nobel Baukia, which made uh, uh, which made a uh, uh, perspective uh, ceramic, which uh, consists of 99.9 percent .9 of aluminium uh, for all the serum uh, um, ceramic system. So growth continues, and uh, and that led to so many examples as you are seeing now. Now let us look at uses and application of dental ceramics. Of course, many of you now, you may, I expect you to have read and be able to see uh, what that means. That is, be able to pinpoint uh, different uh, uses and application of data ceramics. Uh, we have single or ceramic, usually for crowns. That is, there's no, um, there's no additional material like metal added to it. Ceramic is used for that. Like I, I talk about bow care, about, about care. They, are, they are all ceramic system. It doesn't contain metal. Uh, so it's, it's a single material kind of uh, ceramic and it's very good for crowns. And this day it has even been improved. Uh, that Secunia has also been included and this has made a fabrication of bridges also possible that can withstand a lot of uh, masticatory load and wear resistant. So we have uh, uses of ceramic for inlays and onlays. Uh, inlays are usually replacement of part of the crown, of usually of, uh, of uh, posterior teeth. And onlays, sorry, that is onlay. Inlay is replacing surface and some depth, some depth, some hole in a crown. Let's say first uh, molar as a crown. And the crown is not deep, it has not uh, got into pop cavity, and you want to replace it, you can make inlays. That part of the inlay will flow into that hole and cover the surface of the posterior state. That is inlay. But only does not go down. That is different between the two. It just cover and replace a damaged part of the natural crown of uh, 
uh, in posterior tube. Then we have ceramic post and cores. This is more or less like uh, today, what we call uh, uh, implants, ceramics post and cores. These are different uses of ceramic that I'm pointing your attention to. And aesthetic laminates, just like veneer, they are usually used to cover part of the crown of a tooth. We have ceramic orthodontist brackets. We have short and long span or ceramic uh, uh, crowns and uh, bridges. Uh, we have also ceramic teeth. These days, I don't see them again. We are used to these acrylic teeth. Many of them have been improved upon. They are also good. Uh, so the porcelain teeth are no uh, longer in the market like we used to have it in the, in the past. Then, of course, we use uh, ceramic for uh, porcelain fused to metal. Uh, this, are, this is the commonest ceramic that is made these days. Then let's go further on classification of metal porcelain. We have, uh, because I told you that we have different systems, so it is a very difficult thing to uh, categorize. But let me look, let's, let's look at this uh, categorization. We have the fire temperature type. We have, uh, sorry about that number two. We have functions with, within the restoration. We have microstructure. We have uh, the, the fabrication uh, uh, process. These are different classification to which ceramic porcelain, I mean porcelain can be placed. Now, according to uh, ceramic that is made according to the firing temperature, we have uh, this composition, I mean this type rather, where the high freezing type, which can fire up to 1,300 degrees centigrade or above, the medium fusing, 1,101 to 1,200 degrees centigrade. This is, these are ceramic made, I mean, classified according to the firing temperatures. We have low fusing, 850 to 1,100 degrees centigrade. We have ultra low fusing, which is less than 850 degrees centigrade. These are ceramic types that are classified according to their uh, firing temperature. Now, uh, according to type, sorry, uh, I think I missed something there. According to type, type as in the kind of materials that are used to making them. We have the Fespatic porcelains. It contains the, uh, the, the, the main component here is Fespatic uh, uh, porcelain and so classified as Fespatic porcelain. We have the Lucite reinforced glass ceramic. We have a uh, Tretras silic, silicic uh, flomica base glass uh, ceramics. We have lithium desilicate uh, uh, base ceramics. We have aluminum reinforced ceramics. We have spinel reinforced ceramic. And we have, which is the commonest today, uh, secundia reinforced uh, ceramic. So these are different types. That is classification according to the type of material uh, which uh, ceramic is made of. So this, we have uh, here seven that are listed. Let's go further and look at other types. Um, let's go. According to its function within the restoration, I actually picked this one from a, uh, a very uh, good uh, textbook. So instead of typing them all over again, I just wanted to show you a different uh, types of ceramic. Now, this is a... Uh, Ceramic based according to, I mean, classified based on uh, what you do in the restoration that we make. Core ceramics. And this supports and reinforces the restoration. That's why they are called core ceramics. Opaque ceramics. They are usually used to hide colors, to hide the metal so that uh, light will not shine through. Uh, there will be no reflection of the color of the metal and it will not uh, bring down the, the restoration of aesthetics. Then we have veneering uh, ceramics. These are ceramics that are used to cover part of the crown. We have body or dentine. This stimulates the dating portion of natural teeth. We have incisor, of course, by its name. It's used for enamel, uh, usually for anterior teeth. We have gingiva 
this one that I applied to the Giva area, area uh, it simulates darker Giva portion of it. We have the translucent, it simulates translucent incisor, and I might see sometimes in natural teeth. Different ways in which uh, uh, ceramics are classified because of their role in the restoration is what I'm trying to lay before you. Then we have the glaze. This impacts smooth glossy surface with the restoration. You see, when a, a ceramics is working and it's picking this material from here, picking this material from here, they are actually the same base material. But the fact is that because of the way they are made, they are made for different purposes. For example, glaze. So for example, stains. Look at glaze now. If you are adding glaze to a already uh, finished or about to be finally finished material, I mean ceramic crown, for example, you are adding glaze. You think glaze is a different material. It's also a ceramics. So because the purpose for which it's made now is to have a, a smooth, glossy surface. And for that reason, uh, it is coated before it is uh, finally uh, fired and presented as a, as a finished job. So a glaze is also a ceramic. It is not a different material that is being brought from somewhere. Then if you look at ceramic according to microstructure, then we have three classifications. We have glass ceramics, we have crystalline ceramics, we have crystal containing glasses ceramics. <laughs> you see, I told you when we started this lecture, that ceramic is very, very wide. And as a matter of fact, you cannot uh, cover them all. You can't cover them all. Then according to fabrication process, we have condensable ceramic, we have slip cast glass infiltrated ceramics, we have heat press ceramics, we have castable ceramics, we have machinable ceramics, we have various combinations of other ceramics. Like I said, it's a, uh, the list is uh, endless. The castable ceramics, as I told you before, these are ceramics that you cast like metal, that you use centrifugal casting machine to achieve. The machinable ceramics, they are cast cut cam. We will get to know this later. They are cut cam. That is, they are made in blanks, in blocks also, to make, uh, to feed it to the milling machine to produce whatever you have produced uh, uh, through the cut cast system for you. So ceramics are made of different, different, uh, are classified in different, different ways. And they are so classified for different purposes. But you see, ceramic is also very, very good. And that is why it's chosen above all, because of its strength. It's very strong. Uh, you know, it went through a, 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 a some kind of historical development that's from poor aesthetics. You see, when things are developed in science, they are usually because of a problem that wants to be addressed. Gold alloys and the other alloys where well, I use their poor anesthetics, then you see the processes of developing a cer uh, ceramic that led us to this level. And uh, so ceramic is very good, very strong, very durable, is wear resistance. When aluminum was added, become wear resistant. Virtually indestructible in the oral environment. Uh, if you make a ceramic um, restoration for a patient, you can ensure that uh, it, is, it is near impossible when you want to destroy it in the mouth, why you use. It's impervious to oral fluid. It doesn't ab absorb oral fluid. It's not stained easily. So it cannot discolor very quickly. That's one advantage of a dental ceramic. Absolutely biocompatible. Doesn't hurt the patient, doesn't affect the, the tissues, doesn't give any chemical reaction with whatever that is in the mouth. And they are usually used for face restoration. Uh, that, that's one big thing about uh, uh, ceramic. Let's look at the basic constituent. You know, as, as we have been coming from the, the beginning, we've been talking of addition of alumina, the first part, uh, that, uh, the, the first part uh, which is the major component of first part uh, ceramic. We've been talking about this. Let's lay it down now. Let's look at uh, the basic component of uh, I mean, constituent of uh, dental ceramics. We have a uh, first part that's the main uh, component or constituent of dental ceramics. And that is why they are called 
Fespatic porcelain. That is when Fespa is the major uh, component, major constituent. So they are called uh, Fespatic uh, porcelain. And that is the basis of almost all uh, ceramic system. The other system just add a supplant or decrease percentage of other uh, components to make their different system. So most ceramic consists of two bases. And they are namely glassy base and crystalline base. Most ceramic consists of two bases, glassy face and crystalline face. The glassy face acts as matrix. The structure of porcelain is similar to that of glass. And that's why it's very strong and indestructible. The crystalline phase, this is dispersed. This is dispersed within the matrix and improves strength. An example is alumina, spinel, and zirconia. So this usually reinforces strength and makes it very durable and wear resistant. So the structure of um, ceramic is a three-dimensional network of silica. And it's, in that case, it's called silica tetrahedra. Three-dimensional network of silica. And it's, when it is uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, network of silica, it's called silica tetrahedra. And let us look at the tips for the manufacture of ceramic. Uh, pure glass met at high temperature. If you ask those who make glass, like the bottles that you use for your minerals and all that, they are usually subjected to high temperature and it melts. But that high temperature makes it not suitable for dental use. So glass modif modifiers like floors, like uh, floors like alumina, like boric acid, and other alkaline like uh, sodium, potassium are added to lower the melting of pressure. Uh, for short temperature and break down the silica network. After sintering temperature, viscosity, thermal coefficient of expansion and temperature uh, become uh, suitable. And the, the, the material that is, uh, that will be coming, the ceramic that will be coming out of that will be very suitable for a dental use. So pure glass made at high temperature, but they are not good for dental. And so that's why uh, glass modifiers are added. An example is alumina and brick acid, another alkaline, uh, alkaline like uh, material like sodium and potassium. And their purpose is to lower the melting point and the fusion temperature so that the, the silica tetrahedral component is broken down and then um, you now uh, affect the thermal coefficient expansion and temperature. So they are not, they are not suitable for dental use. Upper sphere reduces the translucent sensor. That's why it is under added and bring to conclusion the processes of making dental porcelain. Now, just telling you about the tips on how to, on how um, uh, porcelain is manufactured. Uh, porcelain is a glassy like kind of material. So, uh, because it is uh, requiring high temperature to, for manufacture, it is not suitable for. Uh, for dental use, and that is why some materials have to be added, the flosses have to be added, so that uh, they can bring down the temperature and be used uh, for dental, uh, suitable for dental use. So if you look at the basic constituents of uh, ceramic, the basic constituents are FESPA. They are usually basic glass format. I told you before, FESPA is the major uh, component. We have kaolin, which is acting as a binder, we have quartz, which is as a filler added to the body. We have aluminum, alumina rather, the glass former and floss. It's the glass former, and it's as, used as, uh, as floss. We have alkalis, which I told you before, sodium and uh, potassium. They are the glass modifiers. They help to modify and uh, make them suitable for, for use. Then we have the, uh, the color pigment. We have the opacif uh, opacifiers. These are the basic components of dental ceramics. It's important to take note of all this so that um, uh, if you are asked an exam, uh, what are the basic constituents, you'll be able to list them without any problem. Now, let's all look at FESPA. You know, I told you FESPA is a major thing. If you look up there, you see the first major 
material mentioned is first part. In any composition, maybe a chemical composition of anything, the, the material that has the highest percentage is usually listed first. So first part is very important in a ceramic. A mineral that of course, that is first part, naturally. And this basic component of first part porcelain. Most ceramic has it, like I told you before, most ceramic has it. And it, 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 this first part contains uh, potash. That, those are the alkalic kind of uh, material that we're talking about that can be used as pluses. It contains potash, K2O, soda, Na, Na2O, aluminum, Al2O3. All of you know this. Just for the purpose of anyone who is listening to this video, my, I may not see this slide, you'll be able to know. Uh, what silica is, what alumina is. Silica is SiO2. Um, that is the basic glass format, basic thing in a, that is first part. We're talking about first part now, the basic component, the biggest glass component of ceramic. At high fusing temperature, two things happen. When it subjects first part to high temperature, it forms first partly glass containing potash first part. And you can see the the, 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 um, the chemical formula there, K2O dot L2O3 dot 6XiO2. It contains one molecule of K2, that is potash, and uh, that of uh, alumina, and six of uh, silica. That is what forms perspective glass uh, uh, containing potash first part. So this is um, when first part is subjected to hard transition. Uh, soda is also part of it. And I told you before, soda lowers, they use as a, a floss to lower the temperature. So we have the, the soda there, we have the alumina there, we have the, uh, oh, that is, sorry, uh, the two forms of static glass that contains, um, uh, that containing potash first part, they are that of potassium, and that of sodium. And the formula for this, uh, the, uh, the, the soda for sodium is Na2O, L2O3, 6SO1. So you see the major component between the two now is the potash and the, uh, the soda that makes the difference of this phosphatic glass that contains uh, uh, potash in uh, dental ceramic. So uh, I think you'll be able to grab with that if you have a, you have uh, issue about understanding that I can go over that, uh, but let's conclude now. The pure phosphatic uh, glass is colorless and transparent, and that is why we talk about stain uh, when uh, I mean, ceramic is being manufactured. And let's look at kaolin. Kaolin as one of the parts of the basic constituent of ceramic. It is a clay-like material, and it is hydrated aluminum silicate. It is a binder and it, it provides uh, opacity for the material, I mean, the virtual ceramic that is formed. Let's look at squats. That's, we are trying to break down. You know, you, you try to remember where we started from. We are looking at basic constituents of ceramic, and we're trying to explain their different uses, uh, different roles that they play in the entire uh, ceramic that is formed. It's just like when you are drinking mineral, the mineral will contain soda, will contain sugar, will coloring, uh, coloring agent, and so on. This is the same thing with ceramic. So we're looking at different components of ceramic and trying to explain to you the role they play uh, in the entire system. I've looked at uh, first part, which I say is the major uh, component. I look at uh, kaolin too, which is another uh, component, another constituent. Let's look, look at quartz. Quartz is a, is a form of silica. Uh, where it's relatively unchanged during and after firing. It's a filler providing strength and hardness. Uh, it is also a, a refractory skeleton of porcelain. That is a form, a skeletal, uh, skeletal component that helped the, the, the ceramic not to break down at a high temperature. Depends on the type that you are, that you are using. Alkalis are glass modifiers, they are color. Uh, they, are, they, they help in color pigmentation. They also modify temperatures. Um, 
there are also opacifiers. They reduce um, transparency of uh, ceramic when they are used for making teeth. Alumina is uh, aluminum oxide. This gives strength and opacity, alters softening point and increases viscosity during firing. It is used as a glass former and floss. That is what alumina is. You remember that alumina was what was added to previously developed ceramic system that gives you strength. And that is when it becomes useful for porcelain fused to metal. So over the years, scientists begin to develop different systems, add this component to it and see what uh, it will bring, add this, uh, what importance, what changes it will make, what we finally got to this level of uh, uh, ceramic today. So uh, glass modifiers, of course, I told you they are alkalis, and they are usually sodium, potassium, calcium, mercuric acid, and they are called glass modifiers. And they are also used as flux. Uh, the lower temperature, the increased flow uh, of porcelain during fire. This once it's subjected to temperature, it flows, it makes and flow, and it raises porcelain's uh, CT, uh, that is thermal coefficient of expansion. Uh, this is one importance of uh, glass modifiers. And then we have the color pigment. They are added color uh, to. Uh, to, to the ceramic system. I told you earlier that alkalis they are used for that. If you look at my pointer, I'll show you an example of them. They are usually added and they are called, uh, example, I put sodium, potassium, calcium, mercuric acid. These are different uh, coloring uh, pigments that are added to porcelain. Then we have the opac opacifier. Opacifier, they added to porcelain as pure perspective porcelain which is quite colorless. So, uh, opacifier added to uh, increase opacity so as to simulate natural teeth color, so that there will be no, uh, the, the color of the metal that is beneath increase PFM now, for example, will not be, will not be showing through. That is why uh, uh, opacifiers are added, and that is the purpose in the component. And they are usually oxide of zirconium, titanium, and tin. These are the commonly used opacifiers today. Then color modifiers. The color, you see so many things that make ceramic. That's why ceramic is so strong and um, so useful today for dental uh, uses. The color modifiers, color modifiers are necessary as natural teeth come in different colors. So it helps the manufacturer, which we are, to play around colors. So that the patient uh, teeth or restoration will not look unnatural. As much as we can, we, we play around the color modifiers. And the color modifiers are metallic oxide, like titanium oxide, yellow or brown color, yellow brown uh, system color, nickel oxide, which is brown, copper oxide, which is green, manganese oxide, which is lavender color, and cobalt oxide, which is blue. These are different color systems that are added. Manufacturers have made them in such a way that that is where different shades of porcelain work is uh, the, uh, derived. Different mixture of this, different percentages of it, different uh, types of them are added together and eventually we get this shade one, shade this, shade that. The color modifiers uh, in porcelain, which I, I just mentioned, are the ones that play that role. I made it possible. Then let's look at other specialized uh, porcelain. One, glazes, they are special type of colorless porcelain. You know, I told you before, this, all these components that the ceramics we put together, uh, the opaque, this, they are all ceramics. Uh, the, uh, the glazes to make it half glossy surface is also a ceramic system. They are made in such a way that uh, they are made liquid, powder, so that they can be used for different purposes. And you see glazes, once you fire, you are done with your, uh, your porcelain. The final thing you do to it is you glaze. Glaze makes the surface uh, to be fairly firm, makes uh, the surface be firm, and then uh, any micro pore that are there will be filled 
and it gives a glossy surface. So for that reason, it increases the lifespan of the ceramic. If you place that in the mouth of a patient, discoloration can happen fast. That is without glazing. So it can, uh, uh, it, can uh, it can affect the patient and it can damage the restoration when glaze is not uh, added. But unfortunately, they make porcelain less chemically durable because of the addition in the medium. But then, if you compare ceramic system to so many other material that is you that are used in dentistry, this chemical durability uh, uh, is not a it's, it's not a concern that anyone should talk about. Then we talk of stains. Stains they are also uh, ceramic. They are powder containing high concentration of color modifiers, like we mentioned previously, and they provide individual color, uh, different color variation to the ceramic system. The opaque, of course, it's a specialized type of porcelain used to conceal metal core color in a metal in a PFM, and they are usually applied before porcelain. They are applied to the surface of the metal uh, coping, so that by the time you build the porcelain layers on it, the, the, the color of that metal will not show off eventually. So very good for, uh, very, very good for, uh, for manufacturing of uh, crown bridges, uh, porcelain uh, restorations generally. And reinforced core ceramic, uh, these are usually, you know, I told you alumina, which was introduced in 1965. And another ceramic system has been added now, uh, is called Seconia. And Seconia is now another derivative of it. When they are added, it's extra strength. Some even claim that Seconia materials are stronger than metal. Uh, it's a matter of controversy. Then today we have dealt with a lot of ceramic system. Tomorrow we'll be dealing more uh, as we discuss uh, ceramics. So data ceramics, otherwise referred to as porcelain, came from a long past of history and research. It is important not to disconnect the two because if you disconnect history and, and, and research, you will not know where the question lies. So ceramic is good for restoration with long intention of durability and safety for human online environment. But because it passes through different methods of manufacture, it is not only a little uh, expensive, but have diverse types to choose from. So as data technologists, you'll be familiar with a system that is suitable for you and uh, that we uh, provide a purpose uh, for the restoration when you wish you want to. Uh, make it. Uh, today we have been able to deal with this and I know that uh, a matter of fact we have been able to gain one or two things. I hope people are not sleeping uh, because it has been a, a long uh, few minutes of discussion and uh, as a matter of fact we have been able to deal with um, ceramics. Tomorrow you, what we have heard about ceramics now is little Molo, you hear a lot about ceramic. If I want to finish ceramic, I will have four lectures with you. But I'm going to minimize it to two. So, and this, when uh, you are going to be dealing with your, uh, you're going to be dealing with your uh, professional examination. If you listen to this video separately, I'm telling you, uh, nobody will take you by surprise any question that is coming from ceramic. So um, this is how far we've gone, and I'm happy that the class remains so calm, unlike we have before. And as a matter of fact, I believe that I'm able to communicate some skill and knowledge to you. I'll be happy now to hear back from you. So let me unmute everybody, and let me see. Usually when we want to unmute like this, it used to be very difficult. But let me just do this. What I have done now, it is possible for you to unmute yourself. So uh, you want to ask questions. You want to ask questions. You want me to do something in addition to what I have done. Just tell me. Let me hear back from you. 
so that it will not, uh, it will sound to me that I actually have communicated to you. Okay, sir. Sir, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, and everyone can hear you. Okay, okay sir. Thank you very much, sir. Next nice presentation, I can comment. So my question is that I just want to know the difference between porcelain and zirconia because the way they build it is almost together. But I only know the difference is that the way they build up the porcelain and the way they build up the zirconia is almost together. It's almost the same, I mean. It's the same. Yes, sir. It's the same. So, sir, is this zirconia not using the this thing? It's not using uh, heat. It's only porcelain that is using heat or what? The zirconia use use heat. You know, I said before that okay. ceramic system, ceramic system are very many and diverse. Manufacturers added different components together to achieve a kind of uh, ceramic. And for that reason, it, it, it will begin to give you different names. The bulk care. It's all serum. It's another kind of ceramic. And the manufacturer name it all serum. The bulk care, they name it all serum because they have been able to uh, patent the, the composition. It's just like somebody making a, a drug. He, he will not give you all the details in the right measurement. And that is his own uh, uh, copyright. So everyone makes its own. Just like we have different cola drinks in town now with different brand names. Everybody has its own composition that they put together to achieve its own product. And they don't disclose it all in full details. There's something they see reserved that nobody can copy exactly what they do. So the same thing happened in ceramics. There are different systems. People have made different systems that uh, that is organic, that is peculiar to their own type of serum. So Kenya is one of them, uh, biocare and so many brands that we have. We'll be dealing more with that tomorrow when we are doing another lecture. So it's the same. Sometimes it's a porcelain, sometimes it's a ceramics. They are usually used interchangeably. They are same meaning the same. Oh, okay. Question or you make any request? Contribution. I wish you listen to this video today and get ready tomorrow, 11 a.m. Get ready tomorrow, do another lecture and come back tomorrow with questions if you cannot uh, uh, put anyone together now so that uh, your participation to an understanding uh, will be much better. So, any question? Okay, do we call it a day? By me, they told Lope, who are they, Mary? Alabi Busayo, Bangwaje, Abdul Talib, Adeko Juma, and Adeko Juma, Abdul Juma, Abdul Juma, these are the gentlemen and ladies of H and two that are here, uh, and then I'm telling you that uh, it's an interesting lecture. I'm happy to teach it. I've not taught dental ceramics before. This is my first teaching of dental ceramics. I've never taught it in my life. I don't usually teach dental materials. I've never. That is the truth. Teaching it for the first time in the record history of my practice as a dental technologist. Um, uh, when I was preparing this lecture, I found it very interesting and I'm happy to read it. I have test books I consult online. So I put all this together to make sure I reach your, your understanding in lecture. So it is not that me, I'm a lecturer of data ceramics for years. No, this is the first lecture I'll deliver in data ceramics.
Okay, so do we call it today? Or uh, want me to ask you some questions? Okay, I will ask. The first, the major component of ceramic. Who can tell me? Please just unmute yourself and speak. The major component of ceramic that every ceramic system contains. And I mean, Professor Sayo, if you want to speak, mute, okay, you have to mute yourself. I'm listening. Abdul, you can speak. You don't bother placing your hand. The floor is open to anybody who wants to speak. Okay, sir. That is first part. That is good. First part. First part yes, is the major component of ceramics. Okay, now, what was the name of the man that introduced uh, ceramics to dentistry? The name of the man that introduced dentistry, uh, ceramic to dentistry. I will just ask one more question, then we'll go. <laughs> Anybody remember? Can I remember? And which year was ceramic introduced to dentistry? The man we introduced and the year. The man is Charles Land and it's 1900. The name of the man is Charles Land and it's 1900. What's a material that was added to ceramic that helped increase the strength and make it suitable for uh, better use and uh, wear resistant? What, was, what is the name of that material? Alumina. Alumina, yes, alumina. Alumina. Can anybody tell me one or two uh, acrylics that are added to reduce the temperature of ceramics? You know, sorry, you know ceramics, uh, glass ceramics, they, they, they are subjected to high temperature and some components were added. To and these acrylics reduce the temperature and make it suitable for the manufacture for dental use. Can you tell me one of the acrylics? I uh, know two of them. Sodium and potassium. That is it. That is it. You collect one thousand for that. Thank you, sir. Bagrand. <laughs> I attended a webinar yesterday from uh, uh, from University of Cape Town, and uh, the, the one lecturer from uh, Rose University now announced to us that. Uh, now we have gotten 3.5 million dollars grant and the, the mm -hmm. professor that was giving the lecture a woman she started laughing and happy i said women with money <laughs> <laughs> when you talk of money you change about chemistry <laughs> the about chemistry will change anyway that's good because they need money you see our two look when they see everything she gather around her neck and head it's a lot of money <laughs> so, <laughs> what make them women. Okay, fine. Now I said, uh, let's go back now. Which material um, was added in nineteen? Or uh, what happened to ceramic in nineteen sixty five? What happened? Nineteen sixty five. What happened to ceramic? <laughs> Can anybody tell me what happened in 1965 to dental ceramics? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Nobody can remember? That was when 1965 was when M. Clean and Hodges 
had a breakthrough, have, have a breakthrough in, their in the introduction of alumina to, to reinforce it for strength. Okay? To, to, to increase the strength of um, uh, ceramic. In 1965, M. Cleaner Hodges introduced alumina. Okay, who can tell me what happened in 1990? What happened in 1990? Um, 1990 saw the rearrangement of all ceramic crowns metastasy. That is it. That was when Nobel Bauer introduced Procera. Procera is all ceramic system. That was when you are right, and um, that uh, all ceramic was used as a card cam stock. Okay, that's correct. Ah, uh, some noise at the background from somebody. Oh, that is Abdul Mutalib uh, dog. I shout you. Do I believe your dog shouting out at the background? At the background. Okay, so um. It's question time. You are not asking me questions, but I'm happy that you give answer to some of the questions that I asked, and uh, that is interesting. That means you follow the lecture through. Uh, if there's no other uh, thing to say, I uh, want to call it a day and wait for another day, which is tomorrow for another lecture. Tell your friends so that you'll be here and attend the lecture again. I'll be here by God's grace, and I believe many of us, and even more people will be here as well. So have a blessed uh, afternoon. Bye-bye, sir. Bye-bye. All the best. Uh, Mubarak, uh, sorry. Right, uh, uh, Mubarak, do you want to say anything? No, not at all, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh -huh. we, we brought Mubarak in. I must say this. Uh, Mubarak was the only person in Ofa that had decision in board exam. And I have always wished to associate with him. But I like brilliant people. He's the only one so far that has a distinction. And um, he just finished his internship uh, today. And I feel like, okay, can you participate in this? He says, uh, ever willing. I'm happy that um, you came. And um, as a matter of fact, I believe you'll be joining us in our lectures. Maybe in future we we'll give him an opportunity also to address uh, or based on his experience in uh, Castina where he did his internship. He told us a little bit of it. Maybe we have more to share with us uh, before lecture tomorrow or another time. So Mubarak, uh, I mean, I'm happy to have you and I believe everybody's happy. See, see his lab there, very powerful lab. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that work didn't allow us to see and to hear you. I know you are saying something. I said I'm happy to join the presentation as well. It's been a while since I joined the class. Okay. I'm happy okay. to join the class. Okay, great. <laughs> so, have a blessed afternoon. See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Bye, bye, sir. Yeah, bye. Tell others so that they come. Okay, sir.